This is me. Uh, no, that's not a picture of me. Uh, I'm, this is me. My name is uh, I'm Mike Lowry. I'm an illustrator, and uh, I'm going to talk to you guys tonight about a couple of different things. So, um, I, well, here's a picture of me that you can look at while I do this. So typically, right now, because of the age range of the books that I'm doing, I go to different places to talk about the books, and a lot of times it's elementary schools. And so I think that what I want to do before I start talking about myself is, um, it seems kind of like washed out, but you can read some of these things uh, while I'm talking, like the toilet flushing options on these toilets in Japan, uh, big and small. I didn't use the small one very much. Uh, but um, so one of the things that I do is I talk at a lot of elementary schools, so it's sort of a different crowd, but something happened and I was thinking about it while I was sitting over here that, that I thought was pretty good. One of the questions that I give out or that I say when I'm talking to elementary school students is they have to fill out this, this diagram, and you'll see why later. There's this book that I did, which is the thing that's over there tonight, Hard Cell, and uh, they – Part of it is they have to fill out a little bit about themselves, and it's a list of questions, like what's your name, if you had a superpower, what would it be, but something happened uh, at one of the last schools that we went to where I said, okay, what's your least favorite food? So, you know, they're elementary school, so you expect what kind of answer, like what's the food that comes up? Least favorite food for an elementary school student, what do you think that they said? Any guesses here? Broccoli, perfect. Every time, broccoli, broccoli, what else? Brussels sprouts, every time. And then I have to be the person that's like, well, garlic Brussels sprouts are pretty good. And, you know, and the teacher's like, nobody cares. And so, and they're just like, we're just here because we want a break from teaching. And, uh, but this one kid, he raised his hand and he said, horse meat. <laughs> and, of course, I thought it was amazing. And I started laughing and his teacher looked at him and she was like, Jeremy, that is the last time, no more talking. I was like, no, you should encourage that. <laughs> like, I feel like I was looking at me at like nine years old. Okay, so that's the end of the, my intro. So uh, let me tell you some stuff about myself. Um, as you saw on that first slide, I'm an illustrator, but I would like to introduce you to my family here. Um, this is a painting. This is real. This is done by a friend of ours who lives in Ghana, and he had someone from the village paint this. Can you guys see the artist's name there? His name is Boys to Men. And he painted this painting of me looking a little bit like Fred Armisen. And my daughter here, that is picture perfect. That's exactly what she looks like. Because uh, we live in Atlanta where it's very hot and kids are melting like ice cream cones. <laughs> this is my lovely family. We live in Atlanta. Uh, this is a map that I did of Atlanta. And I, we already met somebody who lived there. Anybody else like ever passed through randomly for some reason? Yeah, a couple of people. Did you live there or you just passed through? Are you really? All right. And the rest of you probably passed through because we've got some really stellar TJ Maxxes and stuff. Um, but uh, so this is where I live now. And uh, it's not where I'm from. It's where I live now. And uh, but I don't think that like I'm some sort of like city, I mean, country mouse that's here visiting the big city. You know, we really researched before we came where in New York we should stay. We found this awesome trending neighborhood. Um, it's just like you guys probably even heard. It's like Times Square is where we're staying now. They got some really hip places like the Bubba Gump Shrimp <laughs> Company <laughs> is walking distance. It's amazing. So some pretty amazing stuff here in New York. And it's really great to be visiting. So, a little bit about me. I am a co-founder of a, an illustration studio and gallery in Atlanta that's called Paper Ghost, where we do shows and we really celebrate art that is really illustration-focused. You can see some of the kind of stuff that we do. Uh, this is my kid here. That's some other person. I, that's not my wife, but she's, yeah. You saw my wife. This is, uh, she's back there. It was like a photo of that painting by Boys to Men. Um, okay, so anyway, so that's what we do. Uh, the reason that I'm here in some ways is probably because uh, I do a lot of illustration stuff. I do uh, primarily children's books is the things that I'm known for. Here are some of the books that I've worked on. Um, these are some books that I've made. I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, one of these projects, if you can kind of see from where you are, one of these projects uh, was ra later re-released with a whoopee cushion. Uh, which was a highlight of my career. 
Uh, and I like remember just sitting in the tub thinking, like, what have I done? You know, and but can you guess? Any of you all guess which of the projects? Uh, it is the young man blasting off from a fart. That's correct. Yeah, that one came. So these are some of the books that I've done. Uh, these are some of the books I've made, and these are some books uh, that I did not make, is the next section here. So when I was looking for all those covers, I went to Amazon and grabbed a bunch of the covers. And while I was doing that, and I looked up my name, I realized that there was another Mike Lowry who does these books about hockey. And uh, it's pretty similar subject matter-wise. Mm. But I, I like how there's like really no getting around. Like they're like, this is the topic of the book. Here's the photo. This is um, some like space age font, which I thought was pretty good. Um, if you'll notice here, I highlighted this one because I felt like the other ones were more instructional, kind of nuts and bolts hockey. Whereas I feel like this one was like the Robert Frost, uh, you know, collection of short poems about hockey. Um, and I'll say, is there something else? I, I thought about this as I was doing it. I haven't thought of this in a while, but the name Mike Lowry also like kind of conjures up another. Yeah, that's exactly right. There was a documentary that was made about me in the late nineties. It's called bad boys. Um, where I was played. It was, I did a short police officer in career. Is that police officering? All right. Okay, here we go. So these are some books that I did not do different Mike Lowry. And then here are, are, are a few projects that I've worked on over the past couple of years. I promise that I'm going to get through the like talking about myself portion um, because I think as artists, you're sort of like trained not to really talk about yourself as much. Uh, do they have Little Debbie up here? Is that something that they have in the north? Do you, do you, do you any southerners that know Little Debbie here? <sighs> Just like pretend like for the sake of... Okay, and then... Uh, some magazine covers and things like that. One of the things that I end up doing a lot of is food-related drawings. Um, and so you can kind of see this Rhode Island uh, magazine here. It's a lot of food drawings. Okay. Other projects, magazines, and ad agency stuff. And um, I, I wanted to, as I was looking at different things, so you guys can see here, the. can you read what it says from where you're at? It says parts of a pig. Not belly, not belly, and then there's one that's pointing, and it says belly. Uh, the reason I'm pointing out that one right now, I posted that online a couple of weeks ago, and something really interesting happened where there were two recently, what do you, like recently they became vegans, and they were shocked that there were people in this world that would eat animals, and I'm not like this pro, like meat, like everything, but they used my comments area as their platform to argue then with people who were like so pro meat. It was like this weird like vegetarian convention that was happening. And anyway, it was just kind of weird. Okay. So some other projects that I've worked on, and then I'm going to get into the meat of the topic. This is, you guys know these people, they're here in town. They make these tattoos for people who can't commit. And, uh, like my brother-in-law who, uh, it doesn't matter. And, uh, uh, a lot of the projects that I do, even if it's more kid focused, uh, they tend to be really, um, interactive to where kids can, or adults can take these things. It's funny, like seeing it kind of blown out, it just looks like a censorship bar across this kid's face and like it's some sort of protection program thing. But anyway, um, it's a mask, but these are stickers and things like that. Uh, then a few, let's say maybe two years ago, somebody came to me with a project and it really was like a dream project where I got to work on something that was a food truck for Filipino food. And their whole idea for the project was, this is the name of the company and here are some of the dishes that we serve. What can you come up with? I learned that they only use sporks. So I, I don't know, it's the shirt that I came up with or whatever. So these are some of the types of projects that I've done so far, uh, or the types of projects that I work on. But for the evening tonight, uh, I thought I should talk about the real reason that I was asked to speak here. And that is maybe 10 years ago, I was working for a company called ThinkGeek um, as a freelance illustrator. Any of you guys familiar with ThinkGeek? 
Okay, so used to ten years ago, they were really small. There was like eight to ten people that were working in the offices, and they had a new product that they wanted to launch, and it's called the Yoda Backpack. And they asked me to. This is a very different time in my life, you guys. You can tell because I used to wear a watch for some reason, and uh, this is a very different time. You guys think you're like, that's not him, but no, it's got the same mole and everything, but that's, I guess because of my internet celebrityness is really the reason that I was asked to talk to you guys, so, okay, no. Okay, I got to keep rolling, so uh, really what I'm here to talk about is sketchbooks. So, this is a photo of some of my, I am a avid sketchbook keeper. I'm going to kind of roll through some of the things that I think about sketchbooks, um, but then I want to leave it open for questions, that sort of thing. So this was a photo of some of my sketchbooks that I took. Can you guys hear me okay? Am I talking into the microphone enough? Yeah, okay. So this is a photo of some of the sketchbooks that I uh, took this weekend and um, took it into our dark room that we have at the house and just, you know, had the photo in the emulsion. And then slowly I realized all of these, like, ghosts kind of showed up in the photo. Um, that's the end of the joke. Okay. So... <laughs> This is what my sketchbook looks like. Um, just as a quick show of hands before we start talking about this, how many of you all regularly keep a sketchbook? Anybody in here? So this is more than half of the group. So the next slide is a really sort of generic topic slide, which is what is a sketchbook. But the only reason that I'm saying this is not because you don't, you've never heard of a sketchbook before, but more for the idea that we are all in the same place on what I mean by sketchbook. Okay, a sketchbook is absolutely one of the most important parts of the process of my work. Um, and this is why I'm so adamant about kids drawing, which is why I did the book, and um, why I'm so, like, why the topic of tonight was from sketchbook to real book. So I'm going to show you some bits from my sketchbooks, and then I'm going to show you some projects that have come out of those sketches. Make sense? Do you have any questions so far? Any concerns? Okay, no? Okay, no concerns. <laughs> All right. So what is a sketchbook? So uh, the way that I'm talking about a sketchbook is not necessarily the idea of sitting down somewhere in a coffee shop and setting up this little, like, uh, you know, you have your espresso, and then you have a little bit, like a little mini scone, you know, and, uh, and then setting up this whole routine for yourself to where then you can sit and you can look at someone and you set up an easel in the coffee shop. Do you guys do that? I assume that you all don't set up like easels in the coffee shops. Um, but what I mean by sketchbook is that a sketchbook, uh, sketchbooks are a place to draw and doodle and make notes. And for me, this is the way that I have always thought of a sketchbook. I've been keeping one regularly, I, I would say very regularly since about 1998, uh, which was when I was four years old. I'm just kidding, I'm older than that. Um, <laughs> but... You guys are like, oh, I believe it. He's so youthful. Anyway, I don't know, youthful. Um, but as a kid, I had a grandmother who would paint, and she was really, really big into sketchbooks. And so I kept them as a kid, and I would just draw, like, monsters and superheroes and stuff like that. But it, around the you know late 90s, I really started keeping one full time. And for me, a sketchbook became more than just, you know, a, where I would just sit down and draw very specific things. What it is, for me, a sketchbook became a place where I would just keep little pieces of ideas. And sometimes it's lists, sometimes it's ideas for projects. Sometimes, if I don't know what to draw, it'll just be what I ate during the day. You're going to see that as I kind of go through. Um, but this is something that, and I think a lot of you guys already see it, but as a, if you're a creative, is that wording right? If you are a creative? Yeah, I think so. It's absolutely necessary to keep a sketchbook. So a lot of you all raised your hands. Of the folks who raised their hands, how many of you all would say that you work in a sketchbook four times a week? That's pretty heavy sketchbooking. So a lot of hands kind of went down on that. And it, do we have anybody that sketches, let's say, out of 365-ish days a year, would you put yourself in the 300 days a year? Anybody? A couple of folks, okay? This is a really tough thing, and I'm going to talk about how to kind of get into that habit of doing that a little bit more. But I do find it to be really important to keep a sketchbook, and you'll see that in my sketchbook, some days it's just a lot of just keeping track of, um, this is my wife here. She's sitting back there. You can give her your attention. And that's, that's us crying while we were chopping onions. And I, 
I read this fact that you can chew gum and it'll keep you from crying. Have you guys ever read this before? It doesn't work at all. We were just like weeping. You remember? We like we got gum and. Uh, but some days it might be something where I'm keeping track of some things that happened during the day. Some days it's just doodles and it's just I got a new brush pen or I got some new ink and I'm really trying these things out. And then some days uh, it might be. So I have a nine-year-old. We took her to Iceland last year, and I loved. Uh, all the different layers that are required for certain trips, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I carry my sketchbook with me everywhere that I go. And uh, you can see that, like, a lot of these are sort of travel-related, stuff like that. I, so I, I say I, I keep my sketchbook with me, but I've also learned, like, at a certain age, I also started keeping, like, well, that's a stupid thing to say, but, like, a pair of shorts because it gets so hot. It, anyway, okay, let's just keep going. What kind of sketchbooks should you buy? So uh, in this, this idea that sketchbooks would be a place where you keep all of this information, it's not something that you, that's too fancy. Uh, I'm going to kind of roll through this so you guys can ask questions and stuff too. But something that's not too fancy, something that's not intimidating for you to work on. You guys have, typically, anytime that I see that somebody has a fancy sketchbook, it's been a gift, right? Some aunt is like, oh, you, uh, you like drawing? I got you this thing. It's made out of, you know, like a sheep's face, you know, or whatever. And <laughs> it's got this parchment paper in it that was hand pressed. And, and then you, it's too intimidating and you don't know how to use it, right? And it's very typical for even keep people who keep sketchbooks to say, uh, well, I, I, you know, the first page is so intimidating. You know, I don't even use the first page. And, and, and I, I guess that that's true. But if you start keeping uh, a, a record of just like really basic, simple things, a sketchbook does not have to be fancy. And in the same way, so this is, I, I like this one a lot. Um, I think that as an artist, sometimes you have to show off what your strengths are. And for me, it's the anatomy of my wife's arms. Okay, and uh, you know, I you just have to show off sometimes, and those are her beautiful arms. <laughs> so, you know, a sketchbook can be something really simple. This this is just a I have a one of those just sort of cheap kind of stapled together sketchbooks that I use to keep lists and to keep rough ideas and things like that. And then sometimes I work them out a little bit more. So, a sketchbook can really be something that is not intimidating. Oh, and another thing about keeping a sketchbook, this is another thing that, so I, I until recently, I taught college. So I taught at uh, Savannah College of Art and Design for about seven years and taught at uh, various other colleges before that. And one of the things that I, so I always talk about sketchbooks, and one of the things that comes up a lot is students and certain types of artists always want to, this is important German for you guys to learn here, uh, this is a fist bump in German. Um, but students always really wanted to set these really impossible goals for their sketchbooks. Okay, have you guys done that before, maybe? Where you'll set a goal for yourself where every month I'm going to draw, uh, you know, a, a thousand people a month, you know, or something. Just totally insane. I had a student recently, I'm not going to tell the story because it's being recorded or whatever, but I had a student who had a very insane goal of, like, wanting to publish their sketchbooks every month and stuff like that. And it's just really not the way to work. Your goal with sketchbooks should be, if it's not the case already, and I, and I liked that so many of you kept sketchbooks, that, but then the hands went down when I talked about daily, just to make marks in a sketchbook every day. That should be your goal. All right? And that's not the easiest goal to get into. And I ha this happens all the time. So I show you know, these sketchbooks where I show little drawings that I do. You guys are thinking that this is a photo. No, it's pencil drawing. It's a, I'm sorry, what's the laughter for? I don't know. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, but it's this thing where, like, I get it all the time where people say, you know, I, I would love to draw more, but I, I, you know, the big excuse is you don't have time to do it, right? So it's, it becomes up to you to really find time to draw in your sketchbook and just make an effort to draw every single day. Okay, so I feel like I've made it clear, like, what the importance is, right? You get your ideas, you jot them down, you go to it. And then I want to show you this slide, which is the day that I got a letter from Dolly Parton in the mail. I'm showing it for two reasons. One reason is not the real reason, which is there's no other reason other than to show you that I got a letter from Dolly Parton in the mail. And that's what my eyes looked like. All right. So why to keep a sketchbook? Uh, 
the primary thing, if you could kind of walk away with this, is that it's really the place that you find your voice. So if you think about it like this, where a sketchbook is going to be a place where you are making the same types of marks on repeat until you become comfortable with that way of making marks, that becomes your style. All right? People talk about style and voice all the time. And students, especially when we were talking about style, they would just be like really sweaty and uh, – that's I, they weren't they weren't that sweaty, but um, really really nervous about this idea of style, and style isn't necessarily like technique the way that you think it is for some artists. Really, style is just a collection of the way that you make marks and the things that you like to draw and the way that you generally draw them. And the only way that you can figure those things out is if you do it over a series of doing a lot of different types of drawings. Okay, so let me move kind of quick through some of this. So here are some projects that I have done that were based off of some sketchbook things that I drew, and then they came later. So a couple of years ago, I had this really awesome opportunity where a company that I had always really wanted to work for, um, and I, you saw on that first slide, I generally illustrate other people's projects, but they asked me if I would write some things, some, some greeting cards. And this is absolutely true, what I'm about to show you, that when I was a kid, I would hand make greeting cards, and this is what I would draw on the back of those greeting cards. So, um, this is true, and I, but I will say that I feel like it was like done slightly better when I was younger. But I had always really wanted to work with Hallmark, and they approached me and they said that they uh, wanted me to uh, draw some stuff for a new collection. So my brain did this thing that I think that a lot of your brains would do in that situation, which was it completely froze up, and it assured me that the ideas that I had were shit and that they wouldn't work. You know, uh, I don't uh, typically say shit when I'm talking to kids, though, I just realized. So um, anyway, so what I did was instead of just sitting down and being like, happy birthday, all right, so it's your birthday, you know. Um, so what I did was I went through a bunch of old sketchbooks, and what I found was a few things that really fit for the type of themes that they wanted at, at uh, Hallmark. I almost said Hallmark. Um, one was I had done a drawing of these animals a bunch of times of just kind of in a, in a forest type thing. And then I thought it'd be sort of interesting if they had a, uh, a birthday party that they were going to. And this other one was a drawing that I had done that is a diagram of my heart. And some of these items kind of changed, but if you can see here, this is, I drew this about my wife. So there's this little piece here for cake and piece for taco and piece for bacon. She has the rest, and it says, you have most of my heart here. So, And then another thing that I had done is I would go to thrift stores and get some really old uh, book covers, and I would kind of redraw them in my own style for a while in a sketchbook. And I did this drawing, and I don't, can you guys read what it says from there? It says, can, uh, you, you can read it, or you want me to read it, like in a sexy guy voice? Would you mind? No, that's not sexy, but... Uh, would you mind if I folded the laundry is what he's saying. It says, I hope all of your wildest fantasies come true. And uh, so this is for a different company, but there was a thing where, again, I was just drawing these kinds of things, and then I was able to just kind of comb through my sketchbooks and find um, some ideas. I uh, okay, Let me tell you a quick story about this card. Okay, This is for a company called Marion Heath. I don't know if you guys have heard of them or not. Uh, the lady, the art director I was working with was really nice and really excited about everything that I was showing. And uh, one night, so typically I think, are any of you guys like really early morning workers? Anybody works really early in the morning? And then anybody really late workers? You work two or three at night, a couple of you. And then the rest of you aren't listening to the question. So um, you just go to bed at 9, you know, and then I wake up at 8.30, so I'm none of the things that you just suggested. Um, so I came up with this idea. I had been drawing these characters, and I thought it would be sort of funny of making this, like, obviously, like, doodly dog. Doodly dog. Um, and then, anyway, so I, I sent this to him at, what do you, like, two, three, I sent it. And I remember immediately laying down and just thinking, will they hate this? I mean, will they find it offensive? I, I don't know. I started really overthinking this one for some reason. And then they didn't call. Every other time that I would send something, they would call at like 11 or 8.30 the next morning. And this one, they didn't call until like 2 or 3. And I was like, 
you know, you've done it before, right? You start really overthinking, and you're like, I made a joke, and then he likes me. And um, they called, and they were like, oh, you know, we love it as much as we can for your work. You know, you're you're what we can afford, is what they said. Um, <laughs> no, I just kind of, they liked it. All right, so, okay, a couple other quick things. A few years ago, I visited this little, like, suburban village here, and uh, this is in the days of Blogger, and I just posted some, you know, little things that I saw while I was here on a trip. And uh, a company called Gallison, which is part of Mode Puppy, do you guys, have you heard of this company before? They're part of Chronicle now. Uh, they got bought out. They took them as is from my sketchbook, and again, it was just because it was something that I really liked. They could see it from the type of drawing. Okay, so let me show you two more projects that are like that. So uh, I mentioned, I think I mentioned my wife is German. It's kind of like her only defining feature. Uh, now, that was a weird thing to say. You guys are like feeling it out right now. She knows I'm just joking. I love you. Um, <laughs> so uh, the original version of this was just full of German jokes, and I took them out because I like laying in the bed. Um, anyway, so for a while, because of visa stuff, I don't know if you guys have ever had to deal with that stuff before, uh, we had to do, like, she would be there for three months, and then two months here, and then I would go over there for a month, and stuff like that. But on one of the trips, we like to go to a lot of uh, thrift stores and things like that, on one of the trips, uh, I started drawing all of this stuff. And then I just started really making something for her. It was really never intended for it to be something that somebody else would see. And you can see on this one, too, that it's just like, Paper. This is not watercolor paper. This isn't like hot, hot press arche, you know, like fancy watercolor paper. This is just like crummy paper that you can see the lines through the other page. I started making these for her just to write her letters on. And uh, when I got home, I sent it to her and we talked about it for a long time. And that was something that just straight from my sketchbook, I took and I was able to pitch it to Chronicle and they put it out as a sketch, I mean, as a journal. Okay, so one other sketchbook-related thing uh, that I'll talk about here is um, I have to give myself uh, certain kind of tasks to keep up with to keep working in my sketchbook. Okay, so that might be that I, I've told you all like the main goal is what? Like what is my main goal with my sketchbook to once a day? Perfect, thank you so much for listening to me. The rest of you guys are like, pizza coma. So um, so uh, one thing that I started doing was is that I started really not liking drawing for a little bit because I was just sitting down to work on stuff for clients and for projects. Okay. So what I did was I created a project for myself that I wanted to do. And for me, I really like random, dumb facts. Okay. I like the bathroom reader stuff that, you know, like, dad humor kind of stuff. Uh, and so I started looking up these random facts, and I came up with, with this, which is that every day I would just draw some random fact. Now, you can see, hey, do this just for a second, just for this one. Look at the TVs behind you, because the color is a little different on it. I'm pointing that out on this one for a specific reason, and it's because um, if these look kind of polished for a sketchbook, it's because I do everything in pencil or ink, and then I'll scan it in, and I, I color it, and then I post that. Make sense? So I don't want you to think, like, bullshit, that's not his sketchbook. Um, these are photos <laughs> of a dancing goat. So um, anyway, so I, I came up with this concept, and then I started doing it every day. This is something I really liked doing. It's, it, was, it became a passion of mine, and I think people really realized that if you're doing something that you're passionate about, then you'll find other people that have similar tastes that you do. And so I started posting this, and it got posted on some things, and then later, thankfully, it was a publisher that I'd already been working with, but then later they picked it up, and then that just directly as is became a book that comes out next year, I guess. Okay. So I was really excited about it, and then, so the book deal is nice, right? But then there was also, also, let me just say, like, I don't generally talk about myself this much, right? I feel like I have to say that right now, because we've gone to see some talks, and I'm just like, this asshole is, like, full of himself, and it's like, but that's what I was asked you to do, right? Okay, anyway, whatever. So 
You're like, just here for the pizza. All right, but let me show you guys this here. This uh, I'm showing you guys this for two reasons. One, because, so this is an, an, an Indian newspaper came out, and they did a whole thing about those random facts, and they did this drawing of me down here. And I'm showing you one because it's, you know, obviously really flattering that people on the other side of the world are able to see this thing that you're doing. But the second reason I'm doing is I wanted to tell you guys a quick story, which was when it came out, uh, I emailed the author. This is like a print thing. It wasn't on the web. I emailed the author and I said, you know, that I was really thankful that they did this thing about me. Would it be possible to get a copy of the hard copy of the newspaper? And he said, oh, yeah, absolutely. This is all over email, of course. He said, absolutely, but I have a favor to ask of you, which I was like, this is really intriguing. And he said, the Oscars are coming up, and I'm having a really hard time getting interviews with American Hollywood celebrities. Would you put me in contact with some of them? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I said, this is... Say, I don't know any celebrities. I'm sorry. America's really big. So I let him down. And then they pulled the article. No, that's not true. So anyway. All right. So the last thing that I'll show you is the thing that this is kind of the reason that I'm like traveling around a lot right now is that there was a project that I sat down with my publisher, uh, Workman Publishing, which is based here in town. And I had an art director ask me a question that I had never been asked before. I told him that I kept lists. And on top of all of my drawings and things like that, one of the lists that I carry with me is dream projects. Okay, So future long-term goals, things that I would like to work on. I'm a big list keeper. A lot of my lists are small step lists. Are you guys, is this anybody here? Do any of you guys have a list of dream like goals or projects? You should write it down at some point. I think that it really does end up changing the trajectory of like the way that you use your time. And I think that he, he might have sort of, he might have thought that I was kind of exaggerating by saying this. And he said, okay, well, show me your list. What are some of the things that you want to work on? And one of the things that I wanted to work on was a series, at the time, just one book. But I wanted to work on a book that was a graphic novel that, the, like, a kid would read it. But then they, had, it was like choose your own adventure meets graphic novel meets sort of uh, doodle book, you know, that type of thing. And that's how we came up with this doodle adventure series. Um, and uh, it's about this duck who's sort of frustrated all the time. He's kind of a combination of... Did you guys watch Duck Man at all? I will say <laughs> I have referenced Duck Man a lot, typically to elementary school. No, they don't know it. It's this cartoon that was voiced by Jason Alexander in the 90s. Anyway, but... It doesn't matter. It's like a combination of him and maybe the critic or some, some other stuff. But uh, he's always kind of annoyed. And I thought it would be funny if there was like this kid's book, but the, the narrator was always sort of annoyed with the kid. And he walks you through the book, and you have to draw things. And sometimes it works, but typically it doesn't work. And I liked the idea of – I like to pick on my kid a lot, and I wanted a book that would sort of do the same thing. So we came up with this book. Again, it's all from a sketchbook. Uh, the, I would just want to say a couple of quick points here to kind of wrap it up. Uh, the first one, and this is one of the hardest things, is to make time for your sketchbook. Um, this is a sketchbook. If you thought it was a hymnal, uh, this is not like me coming from the South to be like, guys, now's your chance to go back. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, but uh, to make time for your sketchbook. I mentioned before, this is one of those things that's really, really hard to do right now. And a couple of reasons, and I hate to kind of like slam apps in the context of, but anyway, but, um, you know, I think that one of the things to do is really to shut off certain apps that really just demand a lot of your attention. And one of the things that I have been really, really lucky to get to do over the years is we cut out all of our expenses on certain things and we save up to do this one big thing, which is to travel a lot. And traveling overseas has this incredible uh, advantage where these two advantages, which is one, uh, you're away from your house and all of your typical frustrations and like, I need to finish this thing and fix this thing and uh, feed this kid, you know, that's always like, dad, it's Thursday, let's eat. And but it, there's also this added advantage of being away from cellular service. Have you guys had that recently within the last couple of years? And you realize, like, okay, I don't want to be, like, too vivid right now with this imagery, but, like, when was the last time you went to the – maybe you guys don't have this thing. You guys all, like, look at your phone while you're going to the bathroom, right? 
right? Yeah, we can admit to that. You don't have to look at each other in the eyes or whatever. But, like, I've definitely had those points where, like, I sit down and, like, my phone is dead. And I'm just like, what am I going to do now? Like, you just, I guess I'll sit here, you know. Okay, anyway, so the point of that is a bidet. Is, no, that's not the point. So, all right. Um, so I really like this aspect, and I end up, this is one of the big things that we sort of spend money on is uh, getting out of the country and really trying to see new places. And I, I end up doing a lot of drawing while we're gone. Um, and, oh, this was something kind of interesting. Was Well, I don't need to point out everything. But I'm going really fast through some of these, and you can look at them later. I have them on the Insta, Instagrams. And a lot of it's travel-related, as you can see here. Okay, so I'm sort of wrapping up, and then I'm going to ask, or you, you guys are going to ask me questions. I'm not going to ask you questions. Um, but really one of the big points that I wanted to throw out is that you really need to make time to draw. You need to really make time to draw every single day. And it's this stuff that it seems it's really hard to get into the habit into it, right? You guys can see that, that it's sort of a hard habit to get into. Have you guys ever done, have any of you done, this is a designer's thing, it's a stretch, any risograph printing? You guys seen risograph printers? It's like, it looks like a photocopier, but the output sort of looks like a screen print. It's amazing, and it is the most frustrating possible thing uh, that you can do. I went on this like big um, Craigslist. These are the these are the Castrum growing pains. You didn't you didn't need the type. You probably figured that out. Okay, so the last image that I'm going to show you here is uh, Katrin and I. That's my wife. Was uh, we were waiting at a music festival at one point or this art festival thing. And I did some drawings that were just doodles and just sort of waiting, and later was able to turn the drawing into a print, and then later used it for a newspaper thing. Okay, two more things, and then I'll sort of I'll give it up to you guys to ask me stuff. So sketchbooks and social media. This is really, really tough right now. I talked to you before about like maybe trying to cut out some of the – there's this I, – I've started calling it the zombie scroll – where you kind of convince yourself, if you're an illustrator or artist or designer, that you're doing like research to see what other people are doing. You know what I mean? And you're just like, I like it, I love it, I don't like that, I hate it, I love it. And your brain slowly goes into this like other place where nothing matters, right? And you're just, or you like wake up. I know you guys do the same thing, right? You wake up and you're just like, let me just, and then you just look at your phone and nothing means anything. So get, get rid of that. Just delete something. If you need to use Twitter or anything just from your computer, just make it happen and really change the way that you do that. But then also, there's something you have to understand that, like, as an, I, I'm talking specifically more for illustration, graphic design, that sort of thing. You don't have to post every mark that you make, right? People do it all the time. You don't have to post every mark that you make. You have this amazing ability of working for, like, two weeks on some ideas and sketches or whatever it would be, and then posting may be the best thing that came out of that. And the other thing, this is just sort of me sort of like, just take a second here, is nobody wants to see pictures of your dog, right? I mean, maybe your cat, but you're, no, this is so, but like maybe one, but you guys follow these people that post like a thousand pictures of the dog. That's off topic, but just text, you go to the beach with a friend of yours, text your friend that picture of the beach, right? Why are you posting? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, where was I? I, uh, let me look at my notes here. Something about dogs. Anyway, so the, the idea being that if you are wanting to do this, for me, it's as a freelancer, I have to really think every time I post something that an art director could be specifically looking at that post. And that is, it could be whether or not they decide how they, you know, choose their artist or that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Right? We're all on the same page there? Okay. One more thing that I want to say, because we're kind of running out of time, is, but it's really important, is something that I learned really when I started, uh, uh, before I was able to do this full-time and freelance and everything, is you should surround yourself with other people that are really motivated and make good work. It's important. And you have to find people out like that. If you don't have those kind of people, this is why they put an hour at the beginning of this thing and an hour at the end of this thing. Because if you, you, know, you leave and you're not really around those other people, you should kind of bump, find things like this where you bump into those people. Okay? And at the same time, you do not need to talk about every idea that you have before you have it down on paper. Okay? This is something that maybe it's a no-brainer for some of you, but I really had to hear this a long time ago, and it, I think about it all the time. 
because if you have an idea for a project and you tell a close friend of yours and they say something sort of lukewarm or negative, you will get in your head and you will not complete that project, right? But if you tell them and they say something really positive, then you will have gotten the reward out of it and then you don't need to create the thing. Does that make sense? You guys, okay, you guys, okay. All right, so uh, that is the last thing that I wanted to leave you all with. And uh, you can see uh, more of my sketchbooks on Instagram. That's my at 